What is up guys? Today we are going to be playing Darkest Dungeon, which is a game brought to us by Red Hook Studios. This is an early access game, and I've played a fair amount of this game at this point now, and by everything I can see is like this is early access done right. Like the game looks great, it sounds great, it plays great. I mean like yes, there are bugs, there are some balancing issues, there are things that need to get worked out. But all in all, like for an early access game, there's a lot of meat on the bone here. And what there is, is high quality and entertaining and fun. So we're going to go ahead and just start a new campaign here. You see you get three slots. We're going to go ahead and just name this one. And for this playthrough, we are going to be the Dark and Dirty Manor or Estate, whatever they call it. There's a little bit of an intro right here. I'm not going to talk during it, but we're going to get back into the gameplay. And I'm going to explain to you all the mechanics of what's going on. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and click off all these tutorials because I'm going to be explaining to you what's happening anyway. So as we can see right here, we have our map. You can zoom the map in and out with the mouse wheel, and you move it around by holding the right mouse button and then moving the mouse. Uh, and then we're represented by this torch icon. They want us to move to this room, like the big squares are rooms, and then all these little squares are the hallways connecting the rooms. So we're going to go ahead and click there so we can move over. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. All right, so now you can move through the hallway either by pushing A or D to move forward or backwards, or you can click in front of you or behind you to move frontwards or backwards. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. All right, so here we go with our uh, combat uh, screen. You have the enemy right here. He's surprised, indicated by that icon. And we have our abilities. He has Open Vein, which does a base amount of damage and then causes them to bleed two points for three rounds. You have a Pistol Shot, which if you look at the top of this little tooltip, there's four dots on the left and four dots on the right. The white ones are the position that your character needs to be in the formation to use his ability. The red dots indicate what enemies you will hit in their formation with the ability. So as you can see, uh, they don't have any enemies farther back than the front row, so we can't use Pistol Shot. Grape Shot hits the first three front row enemies. You can see those dots are kind of connected right there. So it's a really good AOE. And then Take Aim is a self buff that increases your accuracy and crit. We're gonna go ahead and just do Open Vein on this guy. Hopefully get the bleed. Nope, he resisted it. Okay, now the Crusader, this is more of your front row tank type of guy. We can see he has Smite, which is just straight damage to the face. We have Zealous Accusation, which damages both the front row characters, and it does really good damage and has a high accuracy, so it's a really powerful skill. We have his Stunning Blow, which is low damage, but with a chance to stun. And then we have Bulwark of Faith, which increases your Torch by 5, which we'll talk about in a minute. And it also gives you plus 20 protection, which is very important, because as you can see right here, he has no protection currently. We're not going to use that though, we're going to go ahead and just smite this guy in the face. 
Alright, he still lives, so he gets to attack us. Oh no, we still get an attack because we surprised him. We're gonna just smite him to the face again. Oh, and he's dead. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. So then, whenever you do a fight, you get your rewards. We got a thousand gold for that. Moving on down the hallway. Alright, whenever you see an interactive object, something like you hover it over it and it highlights a little bit, you can either click on it or you can push the W key on your keyboard to interact with it. And then it'll ask you what you want to do. You can interact, cancel, or you can sometimes use items with this, which we'll go into more detail later. Leave nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. An ambush. Send these vermin a oh, we got surprised, so that's not good. It shuffled our position, so now he can't use either one of his uh, pistol abilities. So that's really bad, because we can't attack this rifleman in his back row with the bleed skill. You can only attack the front two rows. And we see this big guy right here is taking up two rows. So out of a possibility of four slots, he's taking up two, and this guy's taking up one. So we're going to go ahead and just try to bleed this guy. He resisted the bleed, that's not good for us. See, this rifleman is going to be able to just keep getting group shots on us from that back row. So we're going to go ahead and just smite this guy in the face. Oh, 24 crit, that was huge right there, that helps us a lot. Rain of whips, we got a big double dodge on that. Things are looking pretty decent for us right now. We're going to go ahead and try to kill this guy, take him out. Now this guy won't be able to do that group attack on us. He can only attack one of us at a time now. So that's really good. We're going to just hit this guy in the face. Oh, unless he dodges. Nine damage, that's pretty good. And he gets the bleed. Looking to kill him right here. And he's down. As the enemy crumbles. Okay, so you can see we got some more quest rewards right here. We got deeds and portraits, which we're going to use to upgrade our town. And we got this jade, which is just worth 250 gold. Pretty good. Alright, uh, as you can see up here, when you complete your quest, this little wax seal comes up. You just click on it to be done. First, we're going to look at this chest. And, but we see right here our crusader has, uh, you can get positive quirks and negative quirks. One of his negative quirks is kleptomania, which means he's prone to stealing items. So you don't want to use this guy to loot chests and things. For, so we're going to click on the highwayman. And we see he's a known cheat. He's not allowed to gamble in town, but he's not going to steal from us. So we're going to check the chest. And it says something doesn't quite look right about it. So this chest is probably trapped. We're not going to mess with it. We're just going to ignore it. We're going to click the uh, quest complete icon. Now that brings us right here. You see our quest reward for doing that was 5,000 gold. This is all the things that we actually got while we were in that dungeon. So we got $2,600 worth of gold and we got all these deeds and portraits. We'll go ahead and just click next. You get uh, your victory screen right here which shows you your character's level progress and their current stress. And it also brings up this mask icon right here. And what this is going to do is it's kind of a lottery roll. You can either get a positive quirk or a negative quirk or you can get both a positive and a negative quirk. Most of the time, I just leave these alone because you get enough positive and negative quirks on your own without doing this. I don't really want to gamble on it. But I'm going to click on it just to show you guys. And we got a positive and a negative quirk. So we got Hegiomania, which is obsessed with sainthood, and Evasive, which is plus five dodge, which is really good for a highwayman. Now the Hegiomania, there's a sanitarium in town, which we'll show you in a minute that you can uh, pay money to have them get this removed from them. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. So, whenever you come back to town, you see the recap of what has happened that week while you were in the dungeon, if you had guys healing or whatever other actions they were taking while you were gone, it would tell you the results of those right here. Over here on the right, we have the quest goals. Uh, defeat the, ne the Apprentice Necromancer, Swine Prince, Wizened Hag, and then stronger versions of those bosses again. 
and you have your roster goals which is to raise every character class up to level six so we're going to start trying to chip away at these eventually but for right now we're just going to head and look at the town so very important whatever screen you are on if you hold h on the keyboard it will bring up a tool tip telling you everything that you can do with that screen that you are currently looking at right now we're going to come over here we're going to look at the stagecoach Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Okay, so you see right here, uh, getting new members does not cost money. They're always available. We have two new available right now. We have a Plague Doctor and a Vestal. So we're going to go ahead and take both of them. What better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? And we'll look at their skills in just a minute. But first we want to look over here and upgrade our stagecoach. Now down here you can see our resources is we have our money and then we have busts, portraits, deeds, and crests. Crests are used in everything upgrading like all the buildings are going to require quests but then different ones are going to require specific things like the stagecoach coach right here he wants uh, deeds. So you see we have 14 deeds, it's going to take 4, so we're going to upgrade both of these Great ones. Can be found that increased our roster size to 11, and, rain. and increased the amount of available heroes that are, are going to be coming in from 2 to 3 each week. So every time we come back there will be 3 heroes here now. So we're going to go ahead and just take that up to 4 right away. And then we're going to kind of gloss over the rest of the town right here. These buildings aren't available. But the tavern and the abbey right here are where you're going to be able to reduce your stress. Which, as your stress gets higher and higher, uh, once it maxes out, your characters have a chance to either become afflicted and get a mental disease like masochistic where they won't accept healing. Or selfish where they will also start stealing from you. Or they'll like move themselves to the back so that they won't take damage. Or they have a chance to get virtuous, which is them kind of rising to the, the occasion and becoming the hero of the day. And it'll give them bonus status effects to their accuracy or crit damage or various things like that. We'll go into more detail as that as it happens. Uh, this building right here is the sanitarium, which is where you are able to remove these negative uh, quirks. It is not unlocked yet. The guild and the tavern right here is where you're going to upgrade your characters themselves. You'll be able to upgrade these skills. And while we're talking about skills, let's look at our two new characters that we got. The Plague Doctor, who got Noxious Blast, which is Blight Damage, which is this game's version of Poison, uh, on the front two row characters, and you have to be in the back three rows to use it. They also got Blinding Gas, which is a very powerful double back row stun. Very, very strong. I don't think it's been very utilized by like players that I've seen on Twitch and stuff so far. Incision is kind of like uh, the Highwayman's bleed uh, attack, where it just does base damage and bleed. is very good for using as like a cleanup on guys. Uh, Battlefield Medicine, this will re uh, remove blight or bleed from your characters. So that's pretty good as well. Let's take a look at the Vestal. The Vestal has Judgment, which you can use on any row as long as you are in the back two rows. It'll do a base amount of damage to them with a decent crit mod, and it heals you for three hit points. It's a very strong ability. Uh, Divine Grace, which is your single target healing ability, it will heal for three to five on average. And then you have your Party Heal, which heals for one to two on average, not including crits and stuff, which I don't think the Party Heal can get a crit. But Divine Grace, at least in higher ranks, can get crits. And then Hand of Light, you have to be in the front two rows to use this. It does a small amount of damage, but it creates a very large negative 25%, negative 10 accuracy debuff on the enemy. So that's very good. Uh, right here you have the graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. So the graveyard doesn't show anything yet, but as we lose characters, they'll fill up in the graveyard and you'll be able to see what dungeon they died and I think there's even a little bit more details. It's kind of like XCOM's uh, memorial. Uh, we can't actually do anything though except get those guys so we're gonna go ahead and just embark onto our next Omega quest. of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. 
Okay, so you see right here, it's uh, this is a green icon which lets us know that it's an Apprentice Level 1 quest. And it tells us that it's short. Our goal is to complete 100% of the room battles. Our rewards down here is collect 3,000 gold, get two busts and two crests, along with whatever we pick up while we're in there. And there's a little synopsis right there. Go out, meet the enemy, and learn how they fight. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you come over here, and you can either just click on their portrait, and it'll put you in the closest available slot from right to left. Or you can click and drag them into whatever slot you want them to be in. Then we're going to go ahead and click the provision button. The cost of preparedness, measured now in gold, later in blood. Okay, so the important thing to know here is that you need to provision yourself for all of the trials that you'll face in the dungeon. So you're going to need food in case you guys get hungry. You can also do a little bit of healing. Each food that you eat just on your own will uh, heal you from one point of damage. And then torches, we're going to go into the torch mechanic when we get into the dungeon. But I find on these short missions right here that about 8 food and 6 torches will get you through a short dungeon. Also, we're going to take one shovel with us in case there's any barriers that we need to get past. The rest of the stuff, anti-venom and bandages, you can use these to cure blight or bleeding on your character. You can also use them to interact with objects in the dungeon. Medicinal ore, herbs, keys, and holy water you use to interact with objects in the dungeon. And we'll go into more detail on that as we get into the dungeon here. But uh, the important thing to note is if you over-provision your group, when you come back, you do not get any money back from the stuff that you didn't use. You don't get to sell back items that just were unused. That's just money that you've lost. So you want to think ahead of time on like what you need to take with you. So all I'm going to take is 8 food, 6 torches, and 1 shovel for a short Apprentice Level 1 quest. We're just going to go ahead and click Embark. The fiends must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? Okay, so let's zoom out our map here, take a look at what we got. We're represented by this torch icon. We need to complete 100% of all the room battles. Well, there's an ability called scouting that will let you kind of see what's coming up ahead. I'm not sure exactly what triggers it. I think it's in your skills, maybe? No, see, I'm not really sure what triggers scouting, but every once in a while, a scouting ability will pop off that shows you what's available or what's coming up in the rooms ahead of you. Uh, sometimes you can also find a map hidden in items in the dungeon that'll tell you about a specific room or maybe show you like the surrounding area. But for right now, we don't know where anything is and we need to do 100% of room battles. Rooms are the big squares. Hallways don't count. But we still need to check them all because we don't know where any fights are. So we're going to go ahead and go this way. It's going to require us to double back. Now here's an item. And we could click on this. Urns hold ashes. What I have found is if you just click on this normally, oh, it did find something. A lot of times, like, you're not going to find anything, you'll just find ashes. And if we had brought the holy water item with us, it would increase our chance to actually find treasure like we did this time. So, while we're talking about uh, mechanics, we have our torches right here. We brought six with us. Our torch right here, as you can see, we have plus scouting and a, an extra chance to surprise monsters while our torch light is full, represented by this bar. As that gets lower and lower, monsters have a greater chance of surprising us, and their accuracy and damage and crit chance will go up on, on us. But as the torch light gets lower and lower and closer to being zero, we get better and better chances to find better loot, and our crit chance against monsters goes up. So it's you kind of want to do a balancing act of what you need. Right now we're going to try to keep it kind of high because we're just starting out. Our guys are kind of weak. And we have a nice fight going on here. So we got this guy, the defender. He's going to soak up a whole lot of damage. So we're going to see if we can't like use the bleed skill and just knock this guy out real quick. Take him out and that moves this guy up so he won't be able to shoot at us from the back row. He's going to have to try to stab at us. We don't need to heal, so we're just going ahead and use Judgment on this back row guy. 
And now, this guy's highly resistant to physical damage, but we have a poison attack, so we're gonna go ahead and try to poison him. And he resisted it, so that's too bad. We're gonna see if we can't take out this second row guy, just keep him from attacking at all. Not quite, but we did take him down quite a bit. We get another attack, see if we can just knock him out. As nice. The fiend falls. And the reason we got a whole round without them able to do anything is was because we were able to surprise them at the beginning of that match. Skeletons, like, it's possible to bleed skeletons, but they have a very high bleed resist, which makes sense. As you see, 100% bleed resist. Now, with trinkets and stuff, you can get a roll high enough to make these guys bleed, but it's very, very hard. But it's the highest damaging attack we have available to us, so we're going to go ahead and use the bleed strike. We're just going to do straight damage to the face. And we're just going to use incision, see if we can't bat clean up. Confidence and we do, nice. As the enemy crumbles. Get all the money. And we're going to keep on trucking. Okay, here's a stack of books right here. Now this could be good or bad. We'll use our healer to kind of look at this. And we're getting a good benefit. So we've been getting lucky so far. And what's that gonna what that's gonna do is it gets us a second uh, good quirk. So I believe it got us second win, which is when our health is below 10 uh, 50 percent, we get plus 10 percent damage. So that's really good. We also have uh, meditator, which improves stress reduction when we meditate in t uh, in town and camping. Flawed release, ranged attacks get negative three crit. That's not a big deal for the healer. We're just going to go ahead and keep on moving. You either click on these doors or you push up to go through them. Uh, up being the W key. Okay, there's nothing in this room, so we're just going to go ahead and click on the room that we just came from. And move on back. Oh! We saw there's a little purple... By and Benjamin. There's a little purple spider icon on the map right there that I didn't see until it was too late. Indicating that there was a trap there that we could have tried to disarm. Didn't work out for us though, so we're going to just keep on moving. And now uh, let's see. I think uh, we're going to want to go this way because there's less rooms to backtrack than going down first. Okay, alchemy table. I'm not going to mess with this. If I had brought medicine with me... I uh, feel a little bit safer messing around with that, but it's really easy to get a disease off of these alchemy tables if you didn't bring medicine with you. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this item to pop our torch up a little bit higher. That way we're not going to get surprised, or at least less likely to be surprised. Let's see, I'm going to see if I can just take out this guy right here again. Oh, not quite, but he is down to one hit point, so that's really good. I'm going to pop this guy in the back row, soften these guys up a little bit. Alright, um... I think I'm going to stun this guy in the back. Oh, good, we got the stun. He can't attack us on the next round. We're going to use the Zealous Accusation to get both these guys because it's going to kill him and then probably do pretty decent damage to him. Press this yeah, so he got five damage to him, taking him down to three, so that was really solid. Got the stun on him so he wasn't able to attack. Oh, we're going to Grape Shot for that AoE damage. Oh, and we take them both out with a nice solid four. These nightmarish creatures can be felt. Take our they money and beaten. keep on moving. Nothing in this room. Uh, I have never searched one of these things successfully. I am going to take a gamble on it, though. Oh! And I continue my trait of never being successful on those cloisters. He got 20 stress from looking in there and seeing something horrible. So this tells us about the torch, which I already... 
uh, told you guys about. But as you can see here, now that the torch is about halfway down, it's adding to our general stress level just while we're fighting and moving around. Um, and it also increases the monster's accuracy and damage versus us, but you see our loot and player crits uh, against them have gone up. So let's see if we can kill this guy. Oh, not quite, but still good damage. Do a little grape shot on these guys. Oh, double dodge, that is not what we wanna see right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off a heal on my front row guy because he's been taking a little bit of damage. Zealous accusation, kill that front guy and this guy's pretty hurt. We get to go again and knock him out. We have been getting lucky on getting surprises on these guys. Victory. So we're doing pretty well on this run so far. But of course, now that I said that, things are gonna go horribly wrong. Oh, we surprised them again. Okay, uh, what do I wanna do here? I think I'm gonna see if I can take a guy out. Nope, not quite. We're gonna try to blind both of these guys. Oh, double dodge, that's horrible. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this guy in the face, take him out. That's one less source of attack we have to worry about next turn. Let's see if I can take this guy out. Oh, 28 on the crit, that's huge. Alright, so now we're down to two guys. These guys are really fast, so they almost always get to go before us. Now it's our turn. We're going to just strike this guy. Almost took him out. Zealous Accusation should get the job done. Down to one guy. And we're just going to back clean up with this incision skill. Nice. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Oh, I'm backtracking now. I'm just going to go ahead and let the torch run down while we're backtracking because we're probably not going to run into any fights since we've cleared this area. There is a possibility that you can fight, though, when you're backtracking. Guys can show up. I'm not sure what the like percentage is exactly, but it can happen. We're still not going to mess with that alchemy table. As you can see, as the light gets low, or we're getting more and more stressed out, just naturally working our way through the hallways. We're gonna go ahead and pop off a couple of torches since we're now moving into unknown territory again. Oh, Iron Maiden, I didn't bring anything uh, like medicine to try to disinfect this, so I'm not gonna do it. It's probably just gonna get me blight or bleeding if I try to open it without the proper item. Got hit by the trap, that's huge stress damage. Not gonna mess with that cabinet either. A lot of those items, like, you really need to bring stuff with you to interact with them properly, or bad things will happen to you. Wow, we surprised another group of guys. This is just great for us. We're gonna try to blind the, the back row here. Double dodge again. We have not been getting any good rolls on that. I'm gonna see if I can take this guy out. Bam, took him out. That's nice. I'm gonna just try to hit this guy in the face. Four damage. And I'm gonna hit him in the face again. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna try to go for the stun on this back row guy, because I don't think he's gonna be in the back row next turn anyway. I'm gonna try to uh, blight this guy and see if we can't dot him up a little bit. The nice thing about uh, the Plague Doctor's Blight is that they stack. So right now it's doing two damage per round for the next three rounds. That would do four damage per round for the next three rounds if I dot him up on the next turn. I think I'm gonna just keep on doing damage since my guys are doing pretty well with health. Except for my, except for her, she's kind of getting down. Maybe I should just pop a heal on her. We're gonna grape shot these guys. Nice dodge. And this should get it done. 
Bam, took out that guy. Now he's up. He can't shoot at us anymore. He just has to try to jab at us. Okay, we're going to go ahead and heal up our highwayman just a little bit. Keep him nice and healthy. Uh, we're going to do a focus strike on the guy in the back. Dot him up again. Bam, let's see if the Blight gets him. And the Blight takes him out because we stacked it up. He took four damage that turn. Alright, uh, this guy has Kleptomania, so we don't want him looking at the chest. We'll have him look at the chest. Contents are mine. See, now there's medicine, so now we can maybe look at like an alchemy table or an Iron Maiden, or one of those more dangerous items. Okay, let's take a look at our map. We're going this way. We still have more room battles. Now these sacks are usually pretty safe. Uh, this guy has Kleptomania, so he's just going to try to steal the items. Alright, so now we have uh, this Iron Maiden right here. We can try to use some medicine on it. And that allowed us to search it successfully, and we got an emerald and a portrait out of that. You really don't want to try to search these things if you don't have medicine to disinfect it. Otherwise, you're going to get blight or bleed if you're lucky, or you'll get some horrible disease that you'll have to get cured in the sanitarium. We brought food with us, so now you can see we've just been in the dungeon for a while, so everybody got hungry. If you chose to starve, they would take physical damage and a whole lot of stress damage. But we brought food with us, so we're just going to eat. Our torch is getting a little bit dark, so before we walk into this room, we're going to pop the light up just a little bit. Oh, and we surprised them again. We are getting really lucky with surprises. It does not normally go like this, guys. I'm going to just focus open vein on this guy. Oh, crit. Take him out. That's huge. That's one less guy to worry about. Uh, I'm going to dot this guy in the front up. Uh, our health is doing pretty good. I'm going to strike this guy in the middle. And we're going to strike the guy in the middle again. Now the reason I was striking the guy in the middle instead of doing AOE or hitting the guy in the back is I wanted to try to take him out real quickly so it forces this guy to move up a slot so that he won't be able to shoot at us. He'll just be able to jab at us with the little bayonet on his uh, crossbow there. So we're going to go ahead and just strike at the guy in the middle again. Oh, he got a dodge. That's not good for us. He gets a turn. See, he has to jab because he's in the middle. All right, we're going to head, and how much health does he have? Three? We're going to use the Grave Shot. Take him out, and that forces him up. See, now he had to jab at us for two instead of shooting at us for seven. I'm just going to add to the dot on this guy again. Oh, not if he dodges, I won't. Now I'm going to start popping out this Zealous Accusation to damage both of them since it does a pretty good amount of damage. See, 4 to 8 damage with an 80% and a 5% chance to crit. So it's a solid attack all the way around. I'm going to just focus on him, see if I can take him out before he gets the turn. Not quite. Take this guy down a little bit more, and then I can get him with an AOE. Oh no, I got stunned. Zealous Accusation would have got both of them. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and go for this guy, because Blight should take him out, I think. Or my 14 crit will take him out. Either way. 
This expedition at least promises success. Okay, that is it. We do have one more room, and we got a scouting. Like I said, I don't know what pops that off. As we can see, there's nothing in that room worth our time. There is an item right here, though, so we're going to go look at that as soon as we search this uh, suit of armor. Oh, Ruins Tactician. Nice. So that gave us plus 15% damage whenever we're in the ruins, which is this area that we're in now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and search this box, though. So we're going to click on that room. And this is an altar. Now, these altars always seem to give us, like, in-dungeon buffs. I've never had them be anything negative. See, it gave us a plus 20 damage buff. But we don't need to go any farther. We don't need to mess with that trap. And there's nothing in that room. So we're just going to go ahead and, and click Complete Quest. More bones return to rest. And we Devils see we got the 3,000 gold, the two busts, and two crests, plus all the stuff that we picked up while we were in there. So pretty good run. We got really lucky surprising a lot of those groups of enemies. Okay, I'm not going to gamble on any of this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and return to town. Once, our estate was the envy of this land. And now we can see... Uh, we've unlocked the tavern, we've unlocked the abbey, and our Plague Doctor and Vestal both got ranked up to level 1. So, uh, before I go into uh, how exactly the tavern and the abbey work, since we've unlocked them, I'm going to go ahead and call it an episode right here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this video has helped you if you've been confused with how some of the stuff works. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.